Welcome to Girl Sense. I'm Maria del Calmen, your host. Today's special guest is Yolanda Grant. Yolanda has been a certified educator in cosmetology since graduating over 30 years ago. Today, she is the founder and owner of Yoshe Cosmetics. The Girl Sense show is so excited to have its first makeover treat. Without further ado, Yolanda, welcome back to the Girl Sense family. So in other words, welcome home again. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is an honor. I'm so glad to be on your show. It's an honor to be here, and I'm, I'm just really happy and excited. Yes, yes. So <laughs> first of all, I'm screaming for joy, so screaming for joy for having you um, on the show. But before we, we begin with the interview and introducing this beautiful, lux luxurious piece of artwork that you have here. <laughs> um, we're going to have uh, the makeup artist. Amaria, hi. And the model for today is? Chevelle. And we're going to send you back, be, you know, backstage, right. as we say. And then uh, once we continue our interview, uh, they will come back and see the magic happen. <laughs> <laughs> so the last time you were on the show, um, we were talking about the natural hair movement. Yes. And how much that can be an emotional mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. Um, since then, you've launched your own cosmetic line called Yoshe Cosmetics. Yoshe Cosmetics. Did you get that? Yoshe Cosmetics. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you launched it, was it in 2018? 2018? Yes, yes, okay. December of 2018. Yep. So, but I know you've been working on this business since probably long before, this, you know, 2018. So tell me a little bit about that. Absolutely. I started, um, I founded, I should say, mm -hmm. Yoche Cosmetics back in 2006. Oh, okay. I was unable to fully launch it. It was, I'm going to say I was just out of season. It wasn't my season to launch the line completely. So it kind of, um, it was, it became a little dormant until one of my students who remembered from when she were when she was in my class as a student okay. she said miss grant do you still have your cosmetic line and i said absolutely i do she needed a vendor for her event that she had at her salon so she kind of sparked something within me and everything was just kind of in place and ready for me to fully launch my line and and i'm just i'm excited i'm so happy unbelievable but can you can I dig a little bit there, like when you say you weren't, uh, you were out of season, explain that a little bit more. Did sure. It, it wasn't your time or literally? Well, it, it, I didn't have all of the resources okay. necessary. Okay. I was able to establish my, um, my, my trade name or logo okay. and I was able to register my business within the IRS, the sure. state IRS. Okay. And um, I was able to, you know, get product and everything, but to have it f the way that I would have liked it to be, yeah. I wasn't able to completely do it. Okay, yeah. beautiful. Um, it doesn't surprise me at all that you have the actual makeup line. I mean, it's just <laughs> part of who you are. Um, but and you mentioned it a little bit of what inspired you to actually come back to it. But initially, what was your inspiration? Sure. I... Um, I've always been around entrepreneurs as a young teenager. I was um, introduced to a woman named Georgia Thomas, who um, is a makeup artist, a model, and a fashion designer. She came to my parents' house years ago, and she did a makeup party for us. And it was for a company called Amber Hughes. I know I'm dating myself. Amber Hughes is way in the mid-early 80s. Okay. Um, then she launched her own line. And I said to myself, well, if she could do it, I can do it. Because I felt that, you know, because I knew her personally, sure. I was able to see how and ask questions. I was close enough to, nice. you know, dig and just oh, find out yeah. information and oh, just, God. yes, a a exactly. So I was, um, from then I was like, I, I think I want to do my own line. Yeah, and how special of that, uh, uh, of that, that um, it was a female. Yes. So that's very important. Yes. And I'm going to ask a follow-up question. Was she a woman of color? Yes. Okay. So, wow. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know, so when you say you're dating yourself back, so can you imagine? I can't imagine we're going however far back right. to have a female of color launching her own makeup line. Yes. I, I don't remember any. I mean, if I have to think at the top of my head, the only one that I remember is probably Imani, mm -hmm. 
And I think that's it. Vera Moore, she, okay. um, I met her at an, the Atlanta Hair Show, the Bronner Brothers Show in, in Atlanta. Okay. And she was more of a celebrity status. She, mm -hmm. she was an actress and mm -hmm. she, um, she um, was on uh, one of the soap operas back in the day. Okay. I can't remember, As the World Turns or whatever. Okay. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But she wasn't close enough for me, but it, it was still inspiring to actually meet her. Of course, yeah. So Georgia was a friend, you right. know, a mentor. Right. She, um, you know, I sat at her feet and, you know, she a lot of tutelage going on, mm. you know. So it was yeah. awesome to just see how she branded herself as a fashion designer, a makeup artist, and her own cosmetic line. Own cosmetic line. Yes. Um, and so how did you, um, and you mentioned that, but how did you really receive that? Because it's like, that's like prime meat right there. You know, like to Absolutely. have that individual so close to you to give you the information as far as entrepreneurship, as far as, you know, there's very little that we can look back on as a young woman of color that um, who can serve as mentors mm -hmm. in industries that we would like to be, but we never really see us in those fields. Right. Um, even in the cosmetic field. Right. You know, so, right. you know, not just an astronaut, but even in the <laughs> cosmetic field. Um, so what kind of advice, if you remember, if you can remember that she gave you during that time? Um, it's kind of, it was a while ago. I'm sure. talking like when I was 18. Sure. Um, she just, she didn't know that I was actually inquiring about starting my own line because she had hers. So I asked, you know, I would ask questions like, well, where did you get your makeup and how did you get it and where did you get your labels from and, you know, how are you, what, what kind of marketing tools are you using? Mm. She had a boutique, so it was almost as if one stream led to another stream that led to another right. stream and then you have a river. So people came into her boutique yes. looking for clothes, and they would see the makeup display. Got it. Okay. So it was kind of like just picking a brain, not mm -hmm. knowing that I want, was going to years later. But, but you were planting that seed. I, the seed was planted, and it was just I was intrigued by it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was like her name on her product yes. says a lot about a lot. the you know and the confidence you know, and just the, the just not being afraid, right. the bravery behind it. That's and that's very true. Especially then, it's equally, if not harder, today. So you can't, can't even imagine, you know. Right, then. right. So again, congratulations. Thank you. Um, so tell me about the name. Sure. Um, <laughs> the name is my name, Yolanda Chevelle. Ah. Okay. So it's kind of like my namesake. Got it. Um, y o y o Yolanda, and then Chevelle, C H E V. Now, I've known you for a long time. I've never known your middle name. Yes, and my, <laughs> my niece is named after me, the oh, model. No. So her name is a part of the, the cosmetic line, oh, Y-O-C-H-E, yes. Sure, sure. Yes. Oh, yes. unbelievable. How special. Yes. <laughs> Thank so you. So we, before we go even further into um, your makeup line, um, you know, let's talk about a little bit more about the history and how self-esteem and emotions are also tied um, you know, with makeup, with our appearance, um, as far as, you know, uh, walking out of your house without it, you know, uh, just like we learned when the whole natural hair movement, you know, took, you know, took off. Mm -hmm. um, there are many, there's phases, right, with mm -hmm. that. And many don't understand, many individuals don't understand that. Even our own people, some don't, even, don't understand how emotional journey that is. So mm -hmm. to step outside in your natural hair within is so freeing, and it's not really articulated and understood that way. Mm -hmm. Well, the same thing is with makeup, yes. right? Because we're so conditioned. Oh, you're, we're girls, we have to wear makeup and blah, 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 and so forth. So for someone to see us in our natural state, you know, sometimes you know there's this particular population that may be literally addicted to the makeup they can't you know leave home without it right um i've had my share um pageantry that i've um, been mm -hmm. a part of in my um youth mm -hmm. and during that whole process that's where i really learned about you know you know getting uh, being dressed um of course you know getting my hair done and but my favorite part was always the makeup. Yes, you know, yes. I, 
I throw things on, <laughs> but I'm not really my own makeup artist. <laughs> oh, you look fine. You're beautiful. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, my daughter, on point. <laughs> yes. I didn't teach her. <laughs> she didn't take that after mama. Um, but, you know, and then on one hand, you had, you know, the indiv some individuals, oh, my God, how exciting, you know, life is, you're great, you're on, you know, I wish I could do that, it's so fascinating. But I got more on from the other side of the scale, like, really, you're doing that, you know, how demeaning, and so forth. And I was like, geez, I just was having fun, you know, like, right. it didn't make you feel so bad because right, right. I was putting makeup on and I was in a pageant or I did some modeling and so forth. Right. So, you know, as an educator, mm -hmm. how do you incorporate uh, one's self-esteem when talking about the beauty industry with your students or just in general? Sure. I, um, I'm an educator. Um, so, uh, I like to, um, I, I address my students by name, of course, but I call them all Linda. And we know Linda means pretty. I also um, fill them up with affirmations. Mm -hmm. And I make sure I challenge, you know, them in areas where they need growth. Mm -hmm. I, almost like a, a cheerleader slash coach, mm -hmm. I play them to their strengths sure. and I couple them with students that may have um, a different type of attribute than they, so that they can see how they can grow. I set standards mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. and I, you know, have them set goals for themselves and I try to make sure they understand that um, good work ethic goes a long way. Sure. Honesty goes a long way. Sure. And there's room for growth for everyone and I remind them why we are here mm -hmm. and that they're to embrace all of the things that are not superficial about themselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all, it's a growing, learning and growing process for all of us. Absolutely. Um, putting on makeup is not to be, is not meant to be a mask. Mm. If it becomes a mask, then there's some deeper issues. Mm. Makeup is designed to enhance, mm. not mask. Mm -hmm. So. Very well put. I like thank that. You. Thank you. I like that. <laughs> um, and then there are, you know, those career choices that a woman sometimes makes, such as, uh, in cosmetology or, you know, uh, just full-time hairdresser or, you know, um, uh, what do you call the nail? Nail technician. Nail technicians, yeah, <laughs> all of that. Um, and even though there's some hypocrisy there because we all go, we all need them. Right, <laughs> right. We all need from, them. From, from birth to the end. <laughs> we all go. Absolutely. You know, one, one time in our lives, Absolutely. we all visit the beauty salon Absolutely. and get our nails done and so forth. But then, you know, the hypocrisy is when we leave and, you know, the individuals that put on their suits and then they go to, you know, whatever law office or whatever it may be, that for them there's no balance. Um, they don't think of it as a career. And there's so much hard work and labor in this industry. Absolutely. So when you chose this line of work, um, have you ever been judged? Yes, I, yes. <laughs> in fact, I have. Um, and at first, you know, of course, you know, it was kind of offensive. I, I took offense, mm. you know, naturally. And then I had to just kind of just pause for a moment and say to myself and to the person, um, there are many facets to the beauty industry. Mm. There's beauty um, industry being performed in, in a um, mortuary, in a, in a funeral home. Mm -hmm. They need to put makeup on the, the person sure. as being laid to rest. Um, there's also, um, like I said, there's many different areas within or occupations within cosmetology. And because it's so glamorized, there's um, celebrity hairstylists and makeup artists. Mm. So, and they make a lot of money. Yep. So they are able to make, um, you know, just as much money as other professions that are in, in the corporate world. Absolutely. So it's, it's, you know, kind of a thing where, you know, it, the, the lifestyle, it, it kind of is similar, you know, for other professions that are in corporate America. So, you know, I, I just, felt that, you know, that was the, the avenue that was best for me, sure. and I have absolutely no regrets. 
And uh, what is your advice for anyone, um, like any of your students to say, oh my gosh, this is what I want to do as well. I mean, I, I know that that's what they're going to school right. for in right. the first place. Um, but how do you um, keep that you know, fire going for them? Because it could be even, not even while, uh, during as a student, that they, someone from the outside were like, oh, you're going to cosmetology? You know, like, why didn't you go to school, school? Right. You right. know, so mm -hmm. how do you incorporate that and keep their passion going and so that no one from the outside, you know, um, throws these darts at their self? -esteem? Absolutely. What I do is um, we go to the hair show in New York mm -hmm. and they get to see platform artists. They get to see um, different ways that they can brand themselves or branch out into other areas within the profession, mm -hmm. I let them know that they, you can work on a cruise ship yeah. and in a salon. There's day spas everywhere. And I just, you know, just kind of just try to remind them that, um, that there's more than standing behind the chair sure. in this trade. Sure. So I just try to make sure I in court, just open their minds up to the other options that there are in the profession so that they're always, they're intrigued by and it kind of piqued their interest. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. In any profession, there are advantages and then there are disadvantages. So um, we know where this line of work can take us. Um, as customers ourselves, you know, we walk out looking and feeling wonderful. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but I could just go and have my eyebrows done, and I feel like a million bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I show everyone. Yes, 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 absolutely, you know, absolutely. It's not even getting my hair done. It's not even getting a makeup. It's not even getting my nose. Right. Just my eyebrows. Yes, you know? yes. And I feel like a million bucks. It makes bucks. a difference. So there's so many advantages, even from a customer-based, um, um, but you're in it, like you're, you're in it behind the scenes. So what are some of the disadvantages or, you know, what are some days where you're like, OMG? <laughs> well, um, one of the disadvantages I could say is if a student realizes they just don't have the passion for it mm -hmm. after they have finished. Um, the, another disadvantage could be um, if they, you know, if there's a struggle with passing the exam. Um, other than that, I, I mean, I can't really think of anything else, but for the most part, if they just don't have, if they, you know, if the fire is not there, right. no matter how many different ways it is, you know, you try to spark it within them, if they just don't have it, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the times, because they're so young, they're high school students, mm -hmm. so they don't know tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so they may say, oh, no, but they always call how can I get my license? I passed. How can I? So, and I'm right there for them yeah. because I've heard it all before. Sure. I know I'm tired. I don't want to do. So, you know, you just kind of just say, oh, let them be and, and let life happen. Yeah. And then they call because there's always money to make in this profession. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. always someone looking for a stylist. Mm -hmm. We get gratified by making another person feel good. Mm -hmm. When I was in school, my instructor said, you sell beauty. This is a service you provide, and you sell beauty. So I've always kept that in mind. Mm -hmm. So, you know, keeping my clients um, happy mm -hmm. is, is something that um, I take pride in, mm -hmm. and I take pleasure in, in making them happy. So it's really no difference is, is, um, as if they were, you know, attending some four-year college. You know, like, you know, my own son who changed his career path like five times. You know, like, mm -hmm. they go in wanting to know, oh, this is what I want, this is what I want, and then like, oh, no, I'm going to switch my major. Mm -hmm. There's really no difference. So, right. So, so as a student, that's something, too, that they can articulate anytime they someone from the outside throws starts. That's right. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Um, so I don't know if this is – so – not playing uh, um, uh, devil's word. Advocate. Advocate. <laughs> Maybe a little. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, Alicia Keys mm -hmm. hasn't worn makeup since I think it's uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. um, before then, like any other individual, whether they're a celebrity or not, thought twi would not leave the house without the makeup, but especially more sh pressure on her. 
um, because in her mind, it's like, if I don't wear makeup, what if I see someone and someone takes a picture? So, uh, she always needs to be picture ready mm-hmm. in her mind because of her status. Um, and I think it was during, if I remember what I read correctly, during her album here, that um, she sort of labeled that album more of uh, being natural and very organic. Mm-hmm. So because of that, she was like, I don't want my makeup for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And it was supposed to, I think, uh, during that process, but it just stayed. Like, it, it just, she just continued, you know, that movement for herself. Mm-hmm. Totally have respect for her. Absolutely. Um, you know, in her decision, she's absolutely have made a powerful impact. However, <laughs> <laughs> however, I think like everything else, right. so we touched a, bit, a little bit, um, mm-hmm. you know, everything deserves a balance, right? You know, so I, 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 I guess, you know, I may feel um, okay with in my skin, like I, mm-hmm. I'm okay with who I am, mm-hmm. right? So, I don't have any problem going outside without my makeup, right. without getting my or my even my hair done or whatever it may be. Um, but I certainly enjoy sitting at that chair, <laughs> <laughs> especially when there's a special event yes. and getting my face done, absolutely, and getting my hair done, yes, you know, for that whatever occasion. So, balance. Right? Absolutely. Just balance. Absolutely. Um, and if you feel, you know, I, I, I'll never understand um, the, um, the, the physical surgeries. I'll never understand. Oh that. no! I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. You know, I'll never yep. or the lipo. The lipo or the, the injections. The, um, the implant around the the waist. Or, I, I yeah. Mean, yeah. So oh yeah. Yeah. Things out there. I'm like, really? What in the world are they what? doing? Mutilating their bodies. <laughs> Like that's, I mean, beauty yeah. is maybe some pain, but not that much. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Um, but what are your thoughts around that? Like, what are your thoughts, um, you know, to making sure, and you touched it a little bit, but yes. just making sure, because I think that's just so important these days um, for because of what is out there because mm-hmm. you know what's on tv because i mean women have always been portrayed however as a model that you have to be a certain height yep. you know certain weight and so forth but um just everything's so digital these days you know before it's just a regular tv but <laughs> everyone's so digital these days super these digital. Are digital kids right so um you know how do we how do we instill that, you know, yes, you may follow the Kardashian. However, you know, like, how do you do that with these young girls these days? Well, you have to um, kind of just let them know there is um, fake reality and, re- and actuality. Um, they have to understand that in everyday life that it is not necessary to walk around in full glam. Mm. Every, it's, and if you can't leave your house full glam, face beat is what, this, what it's called, um, then there's some other things that's going on within you. And they may need to, um, there's, there's certain episodes, I'm a Nayan La fan, I love her. She would have her, client, her guests unma- unmasked. Everyone would just take off their makeup mm. and be on camera with no makeup. And it's, it's almost like a liberating and freeing experience when you can kind of stand in your truth and who you are mm-hmm. and just learning how to just sit there and embrace your own natural beauty yeah. and just be comfortable with your uh, tight Afro curled hair, super light skin, super dark skin, whatever blemishes or whatever you have. It's just important to just be comfortable and, you know, just know that beauty comes from within. <clears throat> pardon me, it comes from within and just be okay with it. Yeah, I think the first reveal, I think for like our generation that I can remember was I think Tyra Bank. Um, yes. Didn't she do something? Yes, like she no did. Makeup of yes, she did. Of some kind? Yes, she did. And I think maybe whenever that took place, I was like, that's brave. Totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> that's she's really a She's a mega, brave. she's a mega uh, supermodel. Sports right. Illustrated on, on Cover Girl. You know, thousands of times over, I'm not exaggerating, but you know yeah, what I mean. Like, yeah, she was, yeah. like, supermodel. For her so, to do yes. Uh, and not just her, but someone, like, that's a me out yes. there, you know? Yes, You know, because I think um, 
audiences, uh, it's female, yes, but um, I also think that those that look like the others uh, will listen more, closer, closely. So to see her, I'm like, oh, wow, like that's really brave. However, she could do it. I could do it. Absolutely, absolutely. It's not that serious. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Right? Take off the makeup and just absolutely. be you, be free, you know. Absolutely. When it's time to have professional pictures taken, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Special occasion, sure. totally okay to get glammed up, but to just walk around and full face glam every day, mm -hmm. that's out of balance, as we said before. Right. So, now that we understand that beauty does start from within, let's talk a little bit of Yoshik. Absolutely. <laughs> so, how do you pick your colors? So, um, what I started with, being because I have the um, cosmetology background, mm -hmm. I understand warm and cool tones. Mm -hmm. When I was in school, I don't know if you remember, in the early, two, late 90s, early 2000s, it was called being draped. Are you a fall? Are you a winter? Are oh, you a yes. spring or summer? Mm -hmm. So understanding tone, warm colors, cool colors. Yes. The winter colors are more cool. Um, and there are reds, so it's almost like reds and cools. So a lot of blues and a lot of reds in the winter. And it was around the, that was around the time that I launched my line. So I wanted right. to make sure I had seasons. So it's all about mm -hmm. the season. Right. I love nature. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's almost like art imitates nature yes. or b vice versa. Yeah. So um, I chose colors that would, were, um, I like nudes. I like reds, and then you know, staying current with what's popular, okay. um, the the purples, mm. you know, the violet colors, and and the deeper tones, and and the glosses, mm -hmm. you know, certain things are just kind of year round, and then there are certain colors that are more popular during certain seasons than others. Like clothing, I guess. Absolutely. Right? So okay. I follow the same mm -hmm. same pattern, um, and that when I um, introduce my spring colors, mm. you're gonna, it's, there's going to be a lot of pastels. Nice. So. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, somewhat of the opposite of what happens in the winter and fall. But how do you do that math? You know, how do you calculate that's the purple I want? From all the sh all the levels of purple, like that's it. Like that's that purple that I want. Well, I look at, um, that's, that's a really good question. <laughs> I, I, um, I look at the, I compare it with the other ones. Okay. And... I try to get the light one and the dark one. Okay. I try to make sure I get at least either a cool tone or a warm tone okay. because I, I love balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I try to pick out, you know, make sure I get a lighter color, a lighter tone and a darker tone and then either warm or cool okay. because you can have a blue purple or you can have a red purple. Okay. You know, the blue purple is cool, the red purple is warm. So I like to make sure I'm, I accommodate because certain, you know, certain colors bring, up, bring out your undertones. Mm -hmm. So there are certain colors that would, may bring out the cool undertone that you have. And certain people are like, oh, I don't like that. You know what I mean? I don't like the way it looks. So I have to make sure I have both warm and cool tones in my line to accommodate everyone's undertone. It's like science. It is. It's such a science. Beauty is science. It's an <laughs> art of science. It's art, science, and beauty all together. All together. Yes. Um, and when you say light to dark, does that speak to day and night? It could, it yes, can? yes. Okay. Because um, in the daytime, you don't usually wear deeper colors. Mm -hmm. Deeper colors are usually worn in the evening for when you're you know, going to, I don't know, dinner party or a gala or something mm -hmm. like that. You would go with a deeper color. So in order to make the makeup look good, you know, there's a palette behind that. Absolutely. And that is your skin. The largest <laughs> organ of the body. <laughs> that is your skin. Yes. Right? So do you have um, skin care now or is that something in production or what? what I don't have it now. Mm -hmm. However, I am, I, I, that's my organic side. Okay. <laughs> I, I get a little organic when it comes to skin care. I, um, tend to um, um, purchase products for myself personally mm -hmm. that have collagen. I look at the pH um, um, numbers that's on there, um, anything that has omega fatty acids. Anything that you put in the body is good for the outside of the body. Mm -hmm. Example, um, oatmeal mm -hmm. is excellent for your skin because it hydrates 
it um, helps to alleviate, um, it calms the skin down, so it reduces inflammation. Um, uh, avocado is that good. That's why they always make, bathe me in oatmeal when I get... <laughs> they bathe you in oatmeal to calm your skin down. I have eczema. Calm me down. No. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, yes. So anything that's good for the outside of the skin is good for when you ingest it, if it's good for you, like, for example, um, strawberries. Mm. So it has vitamin A. So that helps to reduce... Um, and kill bacteria that causes acne. Oh. So but strawberries are delicious and they're good for you. So when we do facials at, at my, um, my school, mm -hmm. uh, custom facials. Wow. Yogurt is wow. good for the face as well. So okay. I get all super organic yeah, when it comes to, and then for exfoliating the face, um, coconut oil and baking soda. Wonderful. Fantastic. Wonderful. Trick question. <laughs> <laughs> Is this collection for women of color or all skin tones? All skin tones. All skin tones. Yes. So we're all in. Everyone's <laughs> included. It's an all inclusion. Um, and do you have other types of products in line or, or are you going to just stick to the actual makeup? Well, yeah. I have um, on my website, I have a section for skin mm -hmm. because I, I love organic, you know, stuff when it comes to skin. So I do have a... Um, Manuka honey soap okay. on my website, and I also have goat milk soap okay. on my website. So those are the soaps that I sure. like for the face. Yeah. Um, the, the lactic acid and um, the goat milk soap helps to exfoliate the outer layer of skin, okay. which helps to um, help the reproduction of the healthy skin cells. So you r get rid of the old skin for the new skin. Beautiful. <laughs> and where are your products manufactured? Uh, there's a company in Canada that I okay. that I use and um, they're awesome. It's okay. it's it's um, a wide range. Mm. Um, there's they are very like they're they're awesome. They do everything. Okay. So the labeling, the manufacturing, the packaging, every they do it all. Okay. So it's a one stop shop. Well, I did get the cue that the model is ready to reveal her face. Um, awesome. But speaking of uh, ingredients. What, do you have any special ingredients that is a must in your makeup line? Well, a lot of people are, um, are into um, making sure they're not tested on animals. Yes. So they're animal cruelty free. Mm -hmm. No parabens or things that will clog the skin pores okay. or anything like that. So, th you know, those kind of like are the basics. Okay, great. All right, so let's have the models come out or the <laughs> model come out. Uh, and the makeup artist, we're ready for you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh. <laughs> and we're back. And you're back. <laughs> you look lovely. Yes. So Valentine's Day look. Yeah. Yes. So tell me, what did you do? Okay, so for the eyes, I use, of course, my Yochi Cosmetics. And this is palette 150. I use this plum color and this mauve color and blended them from the crease from the inner, inner corner right here and brought it in and then I use this bad boy this one's my favorite this is because I love coppers mm -hmm. and this copper tone Earth right tone, here yes. is so gorgeous nice. this is I-116 I use that right in the middle there just to pop out that part she has really big beautiful eyes and mm. I love big eyes yes so when you put a lighter shade right in the middle it just attracts your attention to the eyes Wonderful. Yes, and for our the face, skin. we use BB Cream Skin Perfector, and this is really all you need. It covers everything, full coverage, very nice, and this is shade FB115, and mm -hmm. that's for all over. Mm -hmm. And then for under her eyes, we use this concealing cream, and this is color HC110, and we just put that right underneath there once we did the eyes to just knock out anything that dropped down. Oh my goodness. And what about, what about her, oh, her lips? Gorgeous. Her lips. And I'm your sorry. Lip color. We actually use uh, Toxic. This, this bad boy right here. Toxic. Yes. And that's a matte lip color. Yes. I was, uh, you know, when Purple Rain came out, <laughs> um, yes. I was purple obsessed. Uh, Everything was purple. purple yeah. Everything. Everything was purple. Everything. Yes, Everything. yes. The purple was, lip. Was purple when I was, I, I was purple. That was our high school years, day. Maria. I know. I was purple. That was wet day. and was a wet and wild purple. It was, was a, wet and wild. Wet, was everything was wet and wild. Wet, 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 wet and wild. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we had back then was wet and wild makeup. 
come, we've come a and long I'm way. And I'm so glad because I see it in... It's relevant. It's relevant. It's totally and relevant. Like, you did not invent that. That comes from my time. That's right. That's, thank you, Prince. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you, Prince. We, we love Prince. Well, you look absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very much. Thank you for us. I will have um, the numbers used on her. Um, uploaded on the website for anyone who um, is interested. And of course, I will also have um, Yolanda's website and how you can contact her yes. with any questions. Yes. Um, Yolanda, I just want to really, really, really thank you so, 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 so much. Um, we, have, we have so much to be grateful for. Yes, we do. Um, I mentioned it earlier, we do go back a long time. Yes. Kindergarten time. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Rodriguez class. Miss Rodriguez class. Um, <laughs> and right here in great old Windsor, beloved yes. Windsor. Yes. Um, uh, I mentioned we we do have, you know, from then and now so much to be uh, blessed for mm -hmm. um, and be grateful for. Yes, and amen. I congratulate you once again yes. um, with your uh, makeup line. Thank you. But you know what? More importantly, as women, and as women of color, um, it is so important to support one another. Amen. Right? To yes. celebrate one another. Yes. So I celebrate you today. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. For yes. On. Thank you for having me. This was awesome. Thank you, ladies. And thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Once again, I'm Maria del Calming, your host. Visit girlsense.com for more information about our guest. Join us again for more Girl Sense.